Hi guys, so today I thought I'd do a quick what's in my suitcase video and also just go through a few of the apps which I have downloaded and use whenever I do travel. So let's just jump straight into it. Me being me, I am an overly organized person and the idea of being away for three months kind of like oh freaks me out a bit. I'm like what if I forget something? What if I it doesn't really matter because everything I need, I will be able to purchase over there. It's not going to be the end of the world. But I thought I'd be super organized and I'd download one of the packing apps. It's called Saving Grace. This app did not save anything. If anything, it gave me an anxiety attack. This says that I have 337 outstanding items that I need to pack or things that I need to attend to. Holy hell. That app, I'm just going to delete it. I don't even want to know. That is insane. 337 items that I need to attend to before I leave for my trip. Uh-uh. No way in hell. I am a big list person, so I will just continue with my list. I just use my notes page in my phone and I just write down anything I think of whenever I think of it. That way I know I'm not going to forget anything important. So some other apps that I do use whilst traveling obviously is TripAdvisor. I think everyone uses TripAdvisor. It's great for just having a little bit of insight knowledge into what a place is like or the accommodation or the, you know, the tour from people that have been there and have done it. So you can read the real reviews of what people actually thought about it. So not just the paid commercials and, you know, everything that's all made to seem lighted up. The next app that I've got is Hostel World. So that's just one of the apps that I'll be using for booking hostels along the way. So because we're not really planning what we're doing 100% of the time, we will be booking hotels as we go, or well, not hotels, hostels. And this app, if you book through there, it saves you like the booking fee and a lot of the places will give you like a free breakfast or whatnot. So it's a really handy app to have and to use. The next one is Agoda. That one I usually use just for looking and comparing prices on different hotels and hostels as well. It has pretty much everything in it. Um, the next app is a currency conversion app. Very handy to have, especially when you're... It's a bit funny, like the conversions can be a bit weird and you can get easily confused and then end up paying a fortune for something you thought you were getting a bargain on. The next app I have is a speakeasy and a translation app. So those are really handy for just getting common phrases and just basics on how to speak to people, to the locals in the country you're in because it's always, that's always the fun part, trying to interact and, and trying to explain something to someone that has absolutely no idea what you're saying and that your pronunciation of that word is so far from what it really should be like. It's just hilarious. So the next app I have is called Explorer or World Explorer. It is pretty awesome. It um, will pretty much tell you what is around you. So it goes by your current location. So right now it's telling me what shopping centers are near me, um, what main highways are near me, what train stations are near me. It's pretty much everything that's around me where I live. So that is going to be awesome for when I'm at a hostel, I've got free Wi-Fi, and I'll just open up this app and it'll tell me, okay, this is up the road. That's only 500 meters away. That's a few kilometers away. And it goes on different distances. So you can go through and work out, oh yeah, that's two kilometers away. That's five it's really, really handy, so then you're definitely not going to miss out on any key attractions that are so close by. And the final app that I've downloaded for traveling is called Waze. So, or Wazey, Waze, I'm not really sure how you say it, but that's what it looks like there. That one is so handy for traveling. Um, it will actually tell you what roads it's it's handy for driving i should say not just for traveling so because we are driving a fair bit through europe we will be able to then see where the nearest fuel um fuel station is and what where the cheapest fuel station is also tells us what route would be the quickest so it's really handy when you're not familiar with where you're going and you just need a little bit of a hand and a bit of guidance it's a bit similar to a navman 
but it also kind of works a bit like a social network so other people can put in data and different little like alerts so it's really handy for when you're on the go and you don't really know where you're going all right so now let's jump into what's in my suitcase all right guys so this is my suitcase it is a it is a monzac brand which is the Myers, if you're in Australia, it's the Myers version of suitcases. So I haven't actually put anything in these top pockets or anything at the moment. I may do, but I'm not really a fan of putting anything in those. Um, so let's just open it up and see what's inside. Okay, so I'm not the neatest of packers. I don't really fuss on packing too neatly because I find my suitcase gets thrown around and knocked around as much as it does anyway. So what's the point? Oh, I should mention I did buy this suitcase for this trip. It was on sale at Maya and it's extremely lightweight. I think it was roughly like two or three kilos for the entire suitcase, which is crazy, but super handy because I am an overpacker and this means I will be able to take a few extra items with me. All right, so up in this top, top zip, just unzip this one. I have packed, I've got two or three of the contact lenses that I wear. So I do wear contact lenses quite a lot. I will be wearing glasses a bit while in Europe. I have brought enough of these so that I can wear them pretty much almost every day. So they're down there. I have my straightening iron. I won't be taking a hair dryer or anything. I think that's a bit of a waste of time. I have this bag. It's got all my underwear and my Lorna Jane um, crop tops and whatnot in it, all my Adidas and all that sort of stuff. Um, these bags are awesome for once you're over there, you can also put all your dirty laundry in them. I have another one down here, which has all my shoes in it, except for my joggers. And then I also have all my bikinis. So I think I've got like five or six pairs of bikinis with me, which may seem like a lot, but I will be swimming pretty much every day. So I need a lot and I probably will buy some more when I'm over there. And here on top, I have my floppy brim hat, which I just love. So I'm a bit worried about putting it on top here, but hopefully it doesn't get too damaged. It is floppy anyway. Then I have an umbrella, some extra tissues. I've got my wiki bar from Lush for all those sore muscles from all the walking and whatnot that I'll be doing. I have some dry shampoo and also some iced tea, green tea, aloe vera after sun spray. So that will be perfect for all that sun that I'll be getting. I then also have a new loafer in a the zippy bag. I do put a lot of things in zippy bags because when you're going from hostel to hostel, you don't want to be putting one of these in a suitcase when it's wet. So you can just chuck it straight back in the zippy bag and then it is perfect to travel with. So then I do have my joggers here. I will be doing a lot of walking, a lot of hiking and whatnot because we do plan on visiting a lot of national parks. So I've just got those one pair with me. I have a scarf, a really light scarf. Something that's just going to be easy to throw over if it does get a little chilly. So, And also it could be worn around my head as a headscarf or whatnot. I have some of the new Garnier cleansing water. So this will be handy when I'm on the go and just don't have time to really just give my face a full deep cleanse. So this one bag here, another bag which I'll be able to use for my dirty clothes, has shoes in it. So I do have a pair of closed in shoes like this. These will be for Tomorrowland. They're my festival shoes. I will probably be able to throw them out after Tomorrowland, but they're perfect because I don't want my little toes to get trod on. Then I have a beige sandals and a dark pair of sandals. So two pairs of sandals and then I'll have my black Havianas as well. So I'm only taking like four pairs of shoes in total or five, including my joggers. I really find that people can overpack when it comes to shoes. So I'm just trying to match as much as far as my shoes go as possible. And then I have more tissues because I can never have enough snuff tissues. I then have some suntan oil and some insect repellent because you never know. And that stuff overseas can be very expensive as can 
body lotion. So that can be super expensive. Last time I was in Europe, I found that was way overpriced. So I have packed myself some of that. Sorry, it's not body lotion, it's sun cream. Then I have through here, packed all down here, is my sunglasses. They're my prescription lens sunglasses. I have two pairs of just like cheap ones from Equip. And then I have my Gucci ones, which I bought last time I was in Venice. I then have some workout gear and a throwover shirt, heaps of dresses, some skirts, like long maxi skirts, um, lots and lots of dresses, some little rompers and whatnot. Um, I have a little torch here because you never know on planes or in hostels when you'll need one of those. More singlets. And then more rompers, um, a few going out. I've only taken like two or three going out clothes. I really don't see the point in go wearing heaps going out clothes. I'll probably just party in like little um, denim shorts and whatnot. So here I have one black going out dress. If I took one, I thought black was probably the easiest way to go. A throw over dress for the beach. And then I have one pair of one dress in there I mean sorry not dress one skirt and then I think it's like 10 or 11 pairs of shorts so I have a buttload of shorts but I have so much clothes here that I can mix and match and I will be sweet for three for three months this bag here is full of all of our GoPro equipment so we have a heap of harnesses the chest harness the, um, the head mount or the head harness as well We've got a mount for driving, so the suction cap. We also have the hand harness, and we have right down here. Oh, where is it? I don't even know where it is now. Down here, I have my go pole, which is in a transparent, so that when you have are holding it out, you don't have that awkward pole in front of you. So that is pretty much what is in my suitcase. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like me to do a what's in my carry-on bag, I would be happy to do one of those videos. I haven't planned on doing it, but I definitely could try and find some time before I leave. We do depart on June 12th, so not long to go now, counting down the days. Can't wait to finally get on that plane and just relax and take in everything that's about to happen. So. Keep on watching, make sure you've subscribed to my channel, make sure you watch all my other videos, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye. I guess the reason for this video is not only that I have resigned, but we're going to Europe. And we're not only just going to Europe, we're going for three months.